former senior advisor to Vice President Mike Pence and a member of the Coronavirus Task Force since day one. She walked away from the Trump White House for good in July, and she's here to tell us why. Please welcome Olivia Troy. Welcome, Olivia, to the show. Thank you, Joy. It's a uh Great to be here, joining such empowering women. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to join you. I'm obviously nervous, being my first time ever on live TV, but I am empowered by being surrounded by you, and I'll get through this. I don't think you should worry. We're all friends here of yours, especially me. So last week, <laughs> you released the video we just saw, speaking out against Trump's mishandling of the pandemic of which we have now 200,000 dead. You were on the coronavirus task force since the beginning. Uh, and like I said, 200,000. What was the breaking point for you? And why was it important for you to get the message out there right now? Tell us. So I think the breaking point for me was the fact that uh, the president seems unwavering in his rhetoric about <clears throat> things that matter when it comes to the response to the COVID pandemic. I mean, continues to undermine the doctors on the task force. This has been going on for over six months. There's good work happening. These people come together. We were up day and night trying to figure out how we were going to respond to this crisis and this threat. And not a day went by where the president didn't do something that was counterproductive or undermining of all of the hard work going on behind the scenes for people that were actually really committed to trying to do good and do the right thing. And so I just continued to watch this happening repeatedly, even after my tenure was over and I left. And I decided now is the time where really we're going into a couple of weeks into an election where the, the vote and the way that people vote is going to really matter because this is going to be, if we don't stop this four more years of the continued lying, and we could be in this pandemic for a much longer time, and we're going into the fall, into the winter, this will be a remaining serious concern. It's something people yes. should remember. Wow. Right. Well, you, Olivia, you've, you've said President Trump did not always attend the coronavirus task force meetings. Did he take it seriously when he did attend those meetings? You know, the interesting part is that he did not attend a lot of the meetings. Um, but at times, it was very perplexing to watch him because he would take in the information when he would be briefed by the doctors, but it all depended, depended on what had happened the night before or what he'd seen on Twitter or what was on his agenda. I mean, at times, he would come in and vent about, you know, what had happened on a show of his preferred network that he'd seen the last night, or he wanted to focus more on that. I mean, there were times when we came in on the weekend, and I said it on one of the one of the videos I recorded. You know, we sat there for 45 minutes talking about something else rather than the agenda at hand, which was how do we get Americans home? How do we evacuate them if they're on cruise ships so that they get off the cruise ship safely um, so they don't get sick? I mean, how do we prevent the future spread of the virus? And it was just completely mind blowing sometimes to have him come to, a, you know, it's the president, valuable time. And these other people are also spending valuable time sitting in this room. They, they could be doing their work. I mean, the doctors had a lot of research to be doing. There was a lot of response happening, planning that was going on behind the scenes. But instead, there would be times where we would race an hour with whatever the president wanted to focus on other than the actual pandemic and what was happening with this virus. Well, you say that during one of those meetings that he did attend, you quote Trump as saying, Maybe this COVID thing is a good thing. I don't have to shake hands with these disgusting people. Um, what don't people understand about how he really feels uh, and how he views his supporters? I think I'll never forget that moment when he said that, because I was sitting to the right of him. We were in the Situation Room, I believe it was a weekend. Um, and. It was just surprising to me to hear him. I mean, people know. He, there's, no, there's, there's no hiding the fact that he is a germaphobe. I have heard people say that repeatedly about the president. I know that you're not supposed to walk into his office, and if you cough, forget about it. He'll kick you out. And he has joked where he would jump out of the chair if somebody sneezed during one of the task force meetings. But what was appalling to me is that he goes out there and he claims that he cares about the average American person, right? He cares about the blue-collar people. The truth is, he is so disconnected from that population that continuously, unwaveringly supports him. And so it, it was just completely 
almost like, just like mind blowing to me and so disrespectful to his own base when he came in and said that and said, you know, I think maybe COVID's a good thing. I don't have to shake hands. I don't have to shake any hands anymore with these disgusting people. And he even went to the point to prove, to say, you know, he had, he, yeah, he was a businessman. He was a big millionaire tycoon living in New York City and he'd have to shake hands back in the day. But now as a politician, you're gonna do that even more so. That's how you connect with your voters. And to hear him start off the meeting that, that way, I mean, that just set the tone the entire time on what he was really thinking, honestly, about all of us in the room as well.